welcome to another special episode, special, special episode of The Diplomats as we continue our interviews with the season five Nexus finalists. Today, we are talking to tied for second place, Italy. Poser Tom, known as Tom, Thomas, sitting, Tom, in, Tom works, sitting in the study without a smoking jacket, I might add, but with a library of books and other collectibles back there, along with Audacious Hand and Superstition, we followed this game and we commented on it. And now the finalists are, most of them are kind enough to come in and interview and we're giving you what they say. Our podcast is brought to you by diplomacybriefing.com where you can sign up for free and get all the latest information about what's going on in the hobby of diplomacy. All right, Tom. First of all, congratulations on making the final board and making it exciting. We enjoyed watching uh, Italy's play, and uh, several times we we said we thought you uh, were going to win. Several times I thought I was going to win. It goes back and forth. Why don't you talk to us a little bit about who you are? Uh, you know, we don't need your address, but where, what area of the country you come from, and how you got involved in diplomacy? Sure. Um, well, uh, at the risk of repeating myself from the last interview I gave uh, at the beginning of the tournament uh, on the Diplomacy Broadcast Network, uh, my name is Tom and I am from uh, Portland, Oregon. And I've lived most of my life here. Uh, and when I was in high school, I had a, a teacher who uh, was uh, an enthusiast. Uh, he was, um, he had played uh, when he was uh, uh, in his past career as a, a CIA analyst. And apparently this game is very popular in the intelligence community uh, back then at the time. And he then became a teacher teaching um, uh, a number of classes in my high school. And he introduced me to the hobby. I just fell in love with it. Uh, he played with us in our club and he just beat us again and again and again. And it really, pushed me and inspired me to get better. And when he eventually retired, I took over uh, the club at high, in high school. And after that, uh, that was all face-to-face, -face, but I didn't play another face-to-face -face game for uh, nearly a decade. Um, the hobby for me in college and afterward became online only because it's really hard to get together uh, seven really cutthroat people. And if you show up uh, and you're with some people that are just beginning and then other people have been playing for a long time, that's not necessarily a great experience for the beginners either. Um, and if we're being honest, not a great experience for the more experienced players uh, as well. So I didn't play face-to-face -face for a very long time. The most recent time I played face-to-face -face was at the Cascadia Open uh, tournament in 2020. Uh, that was when I got to look village idiot, uh, Greg, right in the eye and meet him. That's what allowed me to unveil his secret identity when we met in the Zoom call at the beginning of this tournament. It may have been uh, your, it may have been your first great accomplishment of the game was the unmasking of village idiot. Uh, I'm, I'm proud of that. Uh, he, yeah, I, the, I, when I saw his uh, face turn red, I knew I was onto something. Wait, so what happened here? I, I'm not aware of this. Okay, so Village Idiot, of course, played under the uh, pseudonym of Ewok. Right. And uh, during the DBN interviews of the contestants to pick which countries they were going to play, <laughs> they had to reveal themselves on video. And uh, nobody knew who uh, Ewok was except for Tom. Because he, I called him out. Ewok went to a face-to-face -face tournament together and he knew exactly who he was and he disclosed it to everybody. Nice. So now everyone knew that Ewok was really Village Idiot. Nice. I suspect he was going to disclose anyway, but I did get I to play no, I don't at all. He, he, I don't said he, did not. he said he wasn't. Oh, well, then I'm, apparently I was the only one uh, out of the other 99 people in the tournament that had ever met him face-to-face. -face, so the fact we were both in the finals and that was able to happen was a, was a pretty great coincidence. Yeah. How, how would you, oh, go ahead, Hand. I was going to say, I didn't realize till pretty late that we actually had three Cascadians uh, in this game. And uh, I'm really glad to sh see that you guys showed the uh, 
the sense of the sense of unity and uh, <laughs> cooperation of uh, Portland City Council meeting, I would say. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, really, really got it done, guys. Good job. Yeah. It didn't work in anyone's favor. At one point, uh, I told Conk that I needed to uh, study, you know, break off our conversation because the Oregon football game was about to start. And he said, oh, I'm rooting for Stanford. And then later, a couple days later, he's like, man, um, I have to go. The Seahawks game is just, you know, really getting interesting. And we just, like all the regionalisms that you might have expected made things much harder for us, not easier. That's why you didn't get greens. <laughs> uh, okay, so At, uh, uh, by, by the end, Conk found my insistence on Greece uh, sort of a, a running joke, um, and I, I was happy to embrace that. Uh, you, you've talked about you know spots that are you know that are game critical to you. I believe you call them fetish tiles, fetish spots, uh, you know, yeah. hand. But I would just say you come in with a plan. You know exactly how you're going to lock out this area, lock out this area. And I wasn't going to win unless I had a fleet in Greece and a fleet in the Ionian. Yeah. So you describe for us your playing style in general. And of course, you uh, drew last. And so you drew, uh, you didn't have a choice, uh, but you got Italy. Uh, how do you like to play Italy typically? Uh, I love Italy. The, the, the big joke is that I got to be the country I wanted and I got the breakers that I needed to get second place. Um, you said I was tied for second place earlier, go horns. Uh, I, you know, well, you won the tiebreaker for second. I beg to differ. I am in second place. And, you know, right. um, and uh, I went into this tournament thinking it would be more like Top Gun and there wouldn't be any point for second place, but I've actually heard that uh, there will be something coming my way. There's another tournament in February I may qualify for, and I'm really excited that uh, I've been able to, you know, build on this and keep playing because, you know, like I said, I was out of the hobby for quite a while and uh, it's great to be back in and, and rolling because I think, as I've mentioned before, this is my favorite game and it was a blast to play. And I hope that I get to be in another cool tournament in February. Yeah, you're talking about the DBNI Invitational in February 2020, which goes to the top 28 players of 2020. This was a, a very large tournament. You'll get an enormous amount of points for uh, placing second in it. And so if you're in the top 28, you get to go. Uh, I love it. So it should be fun. Maybe you'll see me there. I'm in the running. I don't know if I'll make it or not either. So, uh, But I'm, I'm excited. Uh, I hope Hopefully we both make it. Yeah, I hope so too. Great. You asked me about my general style of play. Yeah. Uh, I do like uh, the central powers. Uh, I consider myself to be a German and Italian expert. Uh, my Austrian game is a little weak, but I get very good results in the center countries. Um, and especially about, uh, especially when I can balance the center powers uh, effectively. And what I mean by that is when I've got two people I can work with, two people who understand that it's not good for Germany if Austria is having a bad game. It's not good for Austria if Italy is having a bad game, unless it's because Austria is killing them, and, and so on. So when you have a center that can get along, that, for me, provides uh, the foundation for a lot of great play, for a lot of great negotiations with the corner powers. And that is my preferred style of play. I don't depend on a central alliance, but I do depend on a good, like people, people who aren't just trying to burn it all down in the middle of the board with me. If I can have a, a little uh, bit of grace, if I can have intelligent uh, stitches, uh, you, you call me you know, someone who makes logical pitches. If I have people who can respond to a logical pitch in the middle of the board, I usually, I, I think that I have a good chance of, of winning those games. Um, one of my worst results was in the finals of season three. Can I swear? Yeah, sure. That little sure. fucker right there, <laughs> was uh, just awful as uh, one of my partners in the middle of the board. Could not make peace with uh, Pez de Mer and their, their infighting just brought the whole <laughs> ship down. And um, 
I, I understand why you played the way you did, Audacious Hand. I think you're a great player, but that's the kind of situation where my style of play just can't thrive. I yeah. can't really leverage my alliances in the center because the center is on fire. Um, yeah. Whereas in this game, there was a very uh, receptive Austrian player, a very receptive German player, and I really had a hand free to try to put thumbs on the scales in the East and the West. Um, it's one of the reasons I like central powers is being able to have control in over, over the whole board. When I'm Turkey or I'm England, I can lose the game having never had a chance to remedy it because there's fuckery going on on the other side of the board. Uh, so I prefer central powers. I prefer to be able to um, leverage that position and I just love talking with everybody. And this was uh, a great game where everyone had open channels and I got to um, really flex uh, my diplomatic muscle. So why don't you tell us a little bit about your opening negotiations and what you thought of the other countries? And I will tell you, uh, Ewok uh, gave you a compliment. He said he thought you were the hardest working player in the game by a country mile. That was my expression that you really tried to work with everybody uh, every turn. That's, I think that's a, that's a fair assessment. Uh, there were, the only time I deliberately cut somebody out of negotiations was uh, Conk a few times when I was sure it was just, everything that was going to him was just coming back around to other people. Uh, I don't, that's not my style and I think it's a little disrespectful. So when I got the sense that he was just leaking you know, nine to five, I had to pull the plug on him uh, a little bit. Uh, the other time, I believe I cut out uh, Austria in the last year, uh, not quite the last year, but maybe in 1909, uh, after he um, stabbed me again for Greece, uh, I felt that uh, a lot of people had played their hand, overplayed the, oh, I'm gonna throw to this person card. There had been so many, uh, uh, jokes about oh i'm oh i'm gonna if you do this i'm gonna throw if you do this i'm gonna throw um if you do it too often you know that's a card you really just want to play once and uh i played it exactly once when austria attacked greece i said i warned you i'm gonna let germany win and uh, if you look at you know we're gonna look at the last year of the game but you'll see that um at that point you it would be hard to look at my moves and see whether or not i was actually making good on that threat or not um but in general, I was talking to everyone all the time. And what were your impressions of the others? My impressions, I would say uh, I went into the game. I looked at their uh, uh, other games uh, in the tournament. I thought that uh, VI and uh, Doc and uh, Kong had really impressive, especially impressive uh, games. I could see like some real intelligence and focus and strategic uh, finesse in uh, their preliminary games. I actually was pretty pleased to be close to, uh, uh, to uh, Alessandro um, and uh, Eustachio. I, I was less sure that they were high quality players. It looked to me like there was a thrown solo in one of the games and in other games it looked like it wasn't so much the result of their play as what was going on on the board. So I really was happy to be close to them. Eustachio you know, was Austria? Yes. Yeah. Um, I hope I'm pronouncing your name right, Eustachio. Eustachio. Um, Eustachio? The CH, the, the CH is, a, is a hard uh, sound in, in Eustachio, thank you, thank you. Um, so I was very glad to be uh, next to them. I, I thought that uh, they might have been some of the weaker players on the board. Um, and so, I opened my negotiations trying to create a central triple and also create a, a wintergreen. Um, VI, it seemed to me, uh, would be under pressure because England and Germany, my sense uh, from the beginning, is that they were going to be very close and work together because they were driven by fear of Doc. Uh, in fact, both of them expressed how nervous they were about being next to Doc, and it seemed to me from the very, very beginning that an EG uh, was in the cards. So I knew that I could afford to give Russia a lot of latitude because it would only be a matter of time before England and Germany came for him. 
So my goal was to uh, open up a channel with him, see if we could knock out Turkey and Russia in that order. And VI was game. And uh, I knew that uh, my relationship that I was building with England and Germany would be good enough to leverage that against him should he ever get out of control. So it seemed like a very safe bet. You mean uh, Turkey and Austria. A center triple to keep Austria honest and a Russia, uh, Austria, Italian attack on Conk to give us all something to do. And that could transition into uh, a wintergreen against Austria, the old Austrian sandwich where we come in from each side. Meanwhile, England and Germany would provide me the leverage I would need to keep Russia from getting the lion's share. At that point, I've got chunks of Turkey, Austria, and France, and my hope was to, uh, well, you know, win. <laughs> so the move to Trieste is arranged? We had an interesting negotiation from the beginning. Uh, Austria said something to me that, in my mind, confirmed that he was not a great player. Now, it turns out he's a very strong player. I have nothing but respect for uh, Eustachio. But he said, I don't like doing usual uh, typical boring strategies. I don't want to just do a vanilla Lepanto. So I said, well, there's, you know, there's only so many other Lepantos I'm willing to try, uh, but have you heard of the key? And he said, I'm not sure I want to do a key, but if you want to move into Trieste, just do it and we can figure out if you get Trieste or you get Serbia or whatever. But um, I understand the need for you to get the extra fleet to be able to move in force and kill Turkey fast. He was game. It was his idea. Uh, it wasn't a key. It was arranged. And we wanted, it was going to be flexible. We could take it in different directions if we needed to. Yeah. It, just, um, it was very surprising to me that usually the deal of letting Trieste, uh, Vienna, uh, Venice into Trieste is the fall Sorry, uh, I got it somewhere. Yeah, the fall move into the Aegean. Yep. Uh, but here you did the convoy. Uh, was there yep. any discussion about you moving the fleet into the Aegean at that point? He had asked for it at one point, um, but I think, and this also gave me the sense that he was planning to stab soon. Uh, he seemed pretty interested in having me get that army off the island. And so at that point, I know two things. I know that um, I'm not long for Trieste in all likelihood. Uh, and my relationship with VI is gonna be very important. Uh, but also I know that um, Austria is not necessarily uh, a long-term partner. And uh, he was interested in having me make sure I got that army away from my other army so that it'd be easier for him to take it back. Uh, and so when I said, I don't want to move to a G and I'd rather just do the convoy, we'll just do a regular boring Lepanto. Russia's in, Conk is in trouble. Now's the time, let's keep it simple. He was game, uh, but I also sensed that he changed his mind very quickly. And that got me thinking that, okay, I will probably be stabbed in the next couple of years. I'll probably be the first person stabbed. And that's honestly not a bad place to be because it's probably going to be a weak stab and it's going to be the kind of thing that I can recover from quickly because I've got good relations with Germany, good relationships with, uh, with Russia. And chances are if Austria stabs me, Turkey's going to be game to talk. He'll be interested in coming back to the table, um, even if I've participated in attacking him up till that point. Well, okay. Well, I mean, I have to push back a little bit against this just I mean, I'm kind of with Austria in terms of the Key Lepanto. I mean, Key Lepanto may be in, you know, who knows, and then 50s or whenever it was drawn up was very tricky, but it's really one of the most recognizable deceptions. And on a, you know, on a yeah. board like this, everyone sees it. Um, I'm also surprised that you think that there's a finite number of Lepantos having been one of the, I think only two or three victims of an acid Lepanto. Um, in infamous game 34 uh sure. there are a, quite a few interesting permutations of that um 
it was getting getting the two fleets i do i do like that uh quite a bit um but i just was all i'm kind of surprised you thought that that would gain you sympathy considering he's pushing you out of one of his home centers uh as well um, well if all he was doing was knocking me out of his home center that wouldn't really be the stab i'm thinking of mm -hmm. um that center was really a, a loner we were talking about swapping it for Greece or swapping it for, uh, you know, if I were to the first speak to get an Italian, a, a Turkish center, then then he would take it back that year. We were discussing lots of ways to do that handoff, but a lot of it was disingenuous. Um, I don't think that a lot of the talk that Austria and I were having was going to come to fruition. So I was really taking it turn at a time, waiting to see when I would be evicted from Trieste. And you say that I wouldn't, it wouldn't be good for sympathy. It's, it's more that uh, the AIR was planning to knock out Conk very quickly. And anything that would disrupt that, like Austrian and Italian infighting, would be a problem for Russia. Mm -hmm. It's not, I mean, the, uh, so he didn't push you to move to Serbia. Oddly enough, that would have worked. It would have been fine for you if that would have happened. I mean, typically the, the move is Turkey goes Bulgaria to Serbia uh, mm -hmm. and you would have been back in Trieste, but you're saying he, he didn't, that's kind of what got your radar up, that and the convoy. I agree. Um, he encouraged the convoy and also he um, wanted to keep units around uh, Trieste. So I was, it was just there as a loner. That was the understanding. And the question is, was he going to evict me with my permission or not? Yeah. I know. I, I was did. grateful to have the center. I mean, let's keep in mind, guys, that I was a five center Italy. Uh, I wasn't expecting that. Uh, I didn't seek that out, but he offered it to me and I wasn't going to say no. So even yeah. if I just say, okay, Trieste is just a loner, it's not mine forever. I still really liked my position. The fact that I had been able to, you know, well, frankly, negotiate my way into someone's home center in the first year of the game. I mean, I will say that if if it is a mistake for Austria to allow you to hold in Trieste, because even if he was going to give you a center, I would have told you to go to Vienna, because the move through Vienna can be anti-Russian. Like you still get the fleet going against the juggernaut and you could push into kind of the Galicia region. Um, so if he allowed you to hold in Trieste, that is kind of very odd, very odd situation. I was definitely perplexed here, it, just because it, it seems tactically suboptimal um, in some ways. Uh, yeah. I don't want to, I, I, you know, I don't really want to just criticize Austria's choices. He played a great game. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just telling you what was going on behind the scenes. That was, in fact, uh, everything you see in the Austrian and Italian moves on this map were uh, mutually agreed upon and planned. Yeah. Gotcha. Let me ask you this. You said, uh, I get the strategy of having an AIR and keeping central powers alive. A lot of times, though, when there's a, a strong a coordinated EG against France, Italy can be a great beneficiary if they move west. Uh, sure. and think about that option. I mean, I know you did eventually, but like early, earlier. Uh, I think that Italian blitzes on France are, are asking for trouble. Even if all of the other cards line up really well, I find that you are going to end up with a red knife in your back about half the time. And this was the finals. I wasn't going to uh, get drummed out in the first few years. I, I, this may sound very conservative, but I just didn't want to take a high risk play like that. I wanted to keep armies near uh, Austria and I wanted to keep uh, my, my units between me and other potential you know, uh, people who would make a quick grab. Now that army ended up being in Trieste instead of Venice, uh, but the philosophy remains the same. I wanted to not overextend West until I felt like I was on solid ground in the East. And that really is all there is to it. It was a strategic choice, nothing to do with tactics. I'm sure that the spoils were there if I went West earlier, but I was very concerned about um, 
rocking the boat with Austria and Russia. Well, and rightly so, as it turned out. Yes. <laughs> I mean, uh, as soon as I moved west, right, uh, uh, it, 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 it fell. All right. And you, so can, you, you can see my, my fleet. I don't know if you've got these maps, but if you do like a, like a slideshow, you can see the fleet that I send west do nothing for years. It just, it goes Tyrrhenian, Lyon, Western, Tunis, Tyrrhenian, oh. Lyon, Western, Spain. You know, it just, it does nothing. We'll get there. We'll get there. That might be a little bit your own fault, Tom. <laughs> oh, I, I know. I know. I'm just, I'm just saying that. And I've, and I've also, got some insight I can provide into why that happened. I'm also very wounded but, because when I was Italy and you were Germany, you, you really wanted me to go to Piedmont. It's almost like you didn't have my best interest in mind. That's, yeah. that's crazy. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the, the full-on attack uh, is on. The AIR is, is, is a definite thing by spring 1902. You've, you've made the moves you need to do for that, and you vacated Trieste. Yes. And this is when I knew the stab was coming. Um, the, I was supposed to uh, hold in Trieste. That was the original plan. And about uh, you know, uh, 10 minutes before the deadline, Austria says he's getting nervous and wants me to move. And then we'll start bouncing in Trieste. I, mm -hmm. At this point, I know it's over, but I want to be the sucker. I, I know this sounds strange. Uh, gentlemen, uh, one of my philosophies is sometimes it's good to be not that good at this game. Sometimes it's good to not leap into the lead, to not have flourishes of greatness in your moves. Sometimes it's good to be the sucker and take a stab as long as it's not a fatal stab. And I wanted Austria to prove to me that he had bad intentions. I wanted him to be the bad guy. And so when he said the last minute, ooh, I feel nervous, will you please leave Trieste and we'll do this bounce, it, it smelled. But I was happy for him to uh, play, his, play his cards, to play, you know, to play it out, to have him show me that his intentions were bad. Because at that point, I felt like I could leverage that, get sympathy, and find allies against Austria. On Discord, you wrote uh, a little more extensively saying, you were more than happy for Austria to have the early leader syndrome in a, on a finals board. Yes. I, 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 did, I, I did not want to lead at any point in this game until the last year. And actually, given that I had tiebreakers, I never wanted to lead. Well, surely you wanted to win. I wanted to oh, win. I saw, the, I, I saw my best path to victory was um, a, a, a tie or a, a near a grab at the end. I felt like my it would play to my strengths if I could keep uh, the balance of power for as long as possible. So the deal was never that the that Trieste was just a loner and that you would get a second fleet, but then just disband the army. We, that was one of the options, uh, but the deal was not that he would take it next turn. We were talking about him taking Trieste back in uh, 03 or 04. Uh. Uh, and you know, it was just, it was all tentative. We had made lots of different negotiations about how it could, how it could break down. Basically, we wanted to make sure that neither one of us could stab each other when the exchange happened. That was a tough thing to negotiate. And in the end, of course, didn't matter because of what happens in the fall. So in the fall, right, you know, uh, you know, just looking at the board, you're not 100% sure that it's a stab because of Trieste. But, I, you know, it looked like he told you to bounce. But the, uh, the move to the Ionian uh, gives it all away. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And at that point, um, I... Again, I, I think it's a, not a good stab. Um, it lets Turkey off the hook, and Turkey is one of the few people that can really uh, turn things around on Austria. At this point, what I told Austria was, OK, you stabbed me. Congratulations. Get ready for the juggernaut. And he- How, how do you respond? He, he, well, first of all, he's some people stab you and they just say, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I, you know, I was so concerned and mixed up and I just don't know what I was thinking. It's always very disingenuous. It's song and you know, it's, it's a tap dance and I've heard it a million times. And, um, and you've done it a million times. 
Oh, well, you know, I, <laughs> yeah. yeah, we've all um, actually, yeah, it depends. Um, I, I tend to be a little uh, crueler sometimes. Uh, I, pre I pre you know, I, there are plenty of games where at the very end I say, gotcha, you're toast, see you next game. And oftentimes that'll actually get a better reaction than the disingenuous, uh, you know, wishy-washiness. But anyway, you know, he was, he was apologetic. He said, oh my God, I did this too soon. I don't know what I was thinking, um, you know, blah, blah, blah. So I didn't think anything of it. Uh, but then it was next year when he said, uh, it was after he convoyed into Naples. I, 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 at the, I don't want to get ahead of ourselves, but yeah, um, let's stick with the move just for one sure. moment. Uh, yeah. yeah, let's stick with this one. We'll stick with this for one moment. Um, he, yeah, it was it was a stab, but I, I I thought to myself, you know what, Russia and Turkey uh, can't hurt can't can only take advantage of this in one way, which is by attacking Austria. And so I felt confident that even though I had lost Trieste, even though the attack on Turkey was up, that I was still in a good position. And in fact, uh, I would be able to easily disband my Eastern fleet and make a peace deal with Turkey. That was my thinking at this time, that I had an easy, harmless disband ahead of me and that I would make war with Austria for a little while. It didn't work out that way. But my plan at this point was to say, okay, now I've got uh, great allies against Austria and uh, Turkey and, and Russia and me are going to kill Austria. And then Russia will have to decide between me and Turkey who he's going to ally with. And I think it'll be me. Because, and of course, turns Russia, out, Russia really didn't go along with that plan. He, yeah. he sure didn't. Uh, but he didn't need to because I was able to negotiate my way out of this with Austria one on one. Right. But so, did you, did, did you honestly, you, you knew that your convoy to Syria wasn't going to go through? No, I, I thought it would go through. He stabbed me, he stabbed me good. Um, but I, I thought that the stab, that it was going to happen in the next couple of years. I didn't yeah. know if it was gonna happen this year or not. It turns out it happened this year. I'm not saying I saw it coming. I'm just saying that it was likely to happen soon and I was, I was prepared for that um, contingency. So I'm yeah, guessing there, there's an argument to let it go. There's an argument to let you convoy that army to Syria and then stab. Yeah, that would have been a better stab. I, yeah. As I said, this was a weak stab. I, I didn't like. Well, this is all stuff I told Austria to his face, uh, too. I said, I mean, is this how you wanted this to go? Is this how you're going to win the game? And he said, you know what? I, I guess not. How do, how do you feel about getting the band back together and you send me back to, to, to Syria? That was that was an easy deal for me to make. So I guess his thinking was maybe to tell you to bounce, and he thought maybe you would say, "Well, we're going to bounce anyway, so I'm going to go to Piedmont," and then that he would kind of have you in his grip a little bit. Um, he yeah. he he told me that uh, uh, Budapest was going to Trieste without support. Yeah, yeah, I know. But what I'm saying is, he was hoping that you would be like, "Well, what's the point of that? I'm going to go to Piedmont or something." Yeah, oh, and lose the center. Or just, yeah, that you'd be more out of position. Who knows? It's just bizarre that he didn't tell you just to wait in Trieste. I guess he, then he was worried. Oh, because you could retreat to Vienna. That's why he wanted you out. Okay. Yeah. 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 It was all, yeah. like I said, the last minute sending me to Venice was, was, was a tell. So, yeah. But like I said, I wanted him to play his hand. And so I wasn't going to change. I was, I'm just an innocent uh, turkey slayer. You know, I'm one of three. But yeah. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not a bad guy. I'm just trying to help uh, kill Turkey. So the irony, uh, he, of course, is that he could have really put the knife in Turkey right now, gained two centers, you know, had yeah. two builds. Yep. And, and be in a dominating position to, uh, with either Russia or against you if he wanted to do it then. You have to keep in mind that Conk this entire time is talking to all three of us nonstop. I would say about a, a third of my communications were with Conk uh, during these early years of the game. He couldn't buy a friend. He just kept trying and trying and trying though, making crazier and crazier offers. And uh, I wasn't gonna be the guy that took the pressure off them. Yeah. Uh, I was gonna let it be Russia and Austria. Eventually Austria a bit. I mean, 
I kind of see it. If if Austria was the guy who wanted something a little exciting from you in the beginning, I can see why you kind of hit it off with Conk here then. Um, you know, I can because it seems like you were, yeah, you didn't want to give him the uh, the rush he needed or something. Uh, yeah, yeah uh, I, I think that uh, Conk's uh, wilder strategies had some appeal to uh, to Austria. Mm-hmm. In a way that my more more traditional plans uh, didn't really resonate. Okay, here we go. Yeah. So, uh... well, can we can I can I just say a little bit about the West at this point? Sure. Um, I'm I'm just working overtime trying to encourage the uh, EG as I discussed when I was talking about my big picture strategy at the beginning of the game, and it's working and it's working well. And I need to find a way to get involved. That, uh, that little move to Lyon was actually one of the more heavily, one of the more serious negotiations I had all game. Uh, in the end, uh, I told France, I told Doc that I was hooked in with the EG. They were telling me what their plans were. They looked to me for tactical advice. And I was communicating with them and making plans with them. Uh, but I didn't actually want him to die, is what I was telling Doc. So I asked Doc, would it be okay if it looked like I was attacking you, but I told you what our attacks were, and I promise you all of my moves will be so bad that I will never capture one of your centers. Yeah, that's clever. And Doc couldn't find, Doc couldn't get a friend, and he was, he happily accepted. And so every move you see in the West at this point from me is, it. I, Again, I think some mistakes are good. It's good to drag your feet sometimes. It's good to miss orders sometimes. It's good to you know, make bad deals sometimes, as long as it's not fatal, as long as you can stay in the game. And I was happy to just do a lousy job in the West. So when we are uh, praising Doc's tactical abilities, you're saying it's because you gave him the playbook. Yes. Nice. Doc, yeah, I told Doc what uh, England and Germany's moves were for the first couple of years of the game, and I'll and I'll point out the turn when I start giving him bad advice. Okay. Uh, here, I assume you knew the convoy was coming, but you wanted to protect Venice. But I, let's go on the north first. I mean, <laughs> not the north of the board, but the north of Italy. You got Germany to come in to make the critical bounce in Tyrolia. Yep. Fantastic. Yeah, this was good. Uh, I, yeah, I, I told him, so keep in mind that there's also a very passive central triple going on at this point. Not serious, but we just check in and say, all right, good job over there. All right, good job over there. Let's kill Turkey, let's kill France, and then we'll cut England and Russia out. It's very passive. It's mostly for cheerleading, but it's it's important cheerleading because it it sort of creates this false, you know, vision of, uh, of good things to come. And it was a fun group chat to run. It was probably the most useful group chat I participated in the entire game because I would attribute uh, Germany's intervention here uh, to it. I think that it was because I took a turn to Germany and say, hey, look, we had a deal in Austria, it broke it. I, I, I need your help to stay alive, otherwise the balance will get thrown off. And I think because the groundwork we had laid in that group chat, I think that appeal uh, really resonated with Germany. Um, he was interested in keeping the center safe. He was interested in keeping leverage over Austria. And he was happy to intervene when I asked for it. And he ended up saving my life. He really likes the word balance, so you got him on that. Yeah. Uh, so do I. I mean, it's also Germany, like, uh, that's always to me when 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 you have when you're when people are asking you when especially Italy and Austria are asking you to come in as a, a peacekeeping force that's a great position to be in as Germany so yeah he he did you know I, I could see why he would want uh how he'd want to do that but and there's there's an echo of this move much later when right. Austria supports Germany into Venice I mean it's not always good right yeah, well, you supported him to Tyrolia, and then he supported, yeah. <laughs> but we'll get to that. Um, we'll get to that. Be, we'll get um, to that. They, they got you here, though, with the move to Naples. I mean. Uh, so, yes. Um, yeah. At this point, so 
<laughs> at this point, I'm pretty sure that uh, I'm in I'm in deep shit because my assumption had been that Turkey and Russia would be able to work together against Austria. Uh, Austria, at this point in the game, <clears throat> we're still chatting it up. We're still friendly, uh, even as he's sticking that knife in deeper. And he points out that his calculation that uh, Conk and VI have beef and will never be able to work together in this game is paying off. And we're laughing about it. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm the sucker because I'm the one who's getting screwed here. But uh, we're laughing about VI and Conk still bouncing in the black. They have uh, we been bouncing too. in the black the whole game. Yeah, yeah. We and, uh, and I'm like, I'm, you know, I'm getting in their ears. I'm saying, guys, Austria is crushing us. He's going to wrap up the entire uh, uh, Balkans, and he's going to be in Venice and Naples. Can you guys get along for one year? And they couldn't. Yeah, no, they, they really couldn't, but Dude, this is the prelude to your greatest diplomatic achievement, I think, of the game. Maybe I'm wrong, but hmm. yeah, um, that's a that's a great question. That's a great point. Um, so, what happens next? Well, actually, can we talk just a little bit more about Rome and my thinking? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah because I, I know because I, I got a. It's a weird move, uh, but my thinking was that first of all, let's say that Austria doesn't trust Kong. There's two, there's three possibilities, sort of. Let's say Austria and Conk are working together. Let's say Austria and Conk are working together, but Austria doesn't trust Conk enough for the convoy. And let's say that they're just not working together. It's it's so it's only a certain percentage of these options that the worst happens, and there's a convoy. And even then, sometimes the convoy goes to Apulia instead of Naples. So there's really a very small set of cases where this exact move happens. Did I get caught with my pants down? Sure, this is, they got me. But my thinking was that if they convoy to Apulia, if Ionian just moves to Naples instead of the convoy, or if, I don't know, something else happens and it just, you know, there's no help from Turkey. Austria has to back out and fight Turkey. I don't, you know, there's other random things that can happen when you've got two, you know, two people who've been fighting all game and only just hit it off last turn. So my thought with Rome is that I needed to prioritize defense of Venice. Once I lost Venice, I'd never be able to get it back. But if I lost Naples, let's say the worst happens, this. If this happens and I lose Naples, I still have a chance because I can always kick him out of Naples, but I'll never be able to get him out of Venice. I saw oh. Venice as the plug that was holding back the flood. Yeah, and you also are sure to land the army this way. It would have, even if you had blocked him out of Naples, your army would still be stranded. So. Yep. There is an there is an element here. I still think that the moving directly to Naples was. I mean, the, their move was pretty good here. I mean, there's kind of you can't really get yeah, around I, that. Yeah, I, they they totally got me, but yeah. I stand by the move to Rome. Yeah. I do think they had a lot of advantages. Go, go ahead, stitches. But so I argue that was a bad move because you had German support, so Venice wasn't uh, under threat. But yeah, a convoy to Apulia would definitely put Venice under threat. And you needed two armies to support each other. So yeah, Rome is your best bet. And yeah, having a stray army in Naples is is way better than Apulia, I think. Yeah. Okay. And you'll you notice me moving from. Time. Go ahead. No, but you were. I was just going to say this is the first. This is the first of the long tour of that Western fleet. In this case, it went, moved uh, to the west to Western Mediterranean to be able to, uh, right. to you know retake Tunis if need be. Um, and I, I just I say this because uh, I want to let you know that there was a reason for every single move that fleet did. Uh, even though if you look at it move after move, it just looks like it's lost. Yeah. Well, you're a real beneficiary of the move from Smyrna to Khan. And I don't know if you talked to Austria about that, you know, before the fall moves as a, as a reason to go, but that is, you know, Kong's thought is, is like, well, he has to expect that, you know, and he just asked yeah. for that right before the deadline. But I, I think that this gave you some leverage, uh, yeah. or at least allowed to put some fear into Austria. Yeah, Turkey was a bad dog here. Yeah, yeah. Austria was, uh, at some point, he transitioned from being, giving this, giving me the song and dance 
to being uh, what I judge to be authentic about um, his contrition and feeling like he had jumped the gun. And I thought he had jumped the gun. So when he told me he agreed, I, I mean, I could see his reasoning. And also once someone has you, once they are in your home centers and they tell you they're moving out, they don't have a lot of reasons to lie. So I took that as a pretty good sign. So did he volunteer that or did you, or did you convince him? Uh, it I, I don't want to give myself too much credit. It was a joint, it was a joint uh, effort. Uh, he said, I blew it. I stabbed you too early. Uh, I don't think that I'm going to unify Russia and Turkey. You're wrong about that. But I do think that I am going to make myself a target and I'm not going to be able to hold things together with Turkey. And uh, Turkey is asking for too much and he's being a problem. And I had it better with the, uh, the AIR. So how can we make this right? And I told him, I need you out of my home immediately. And uh, we figured out the details from there. Everything yeah. you see in the next couple turns is choreographed 100% between me and Austria. I will say, I do think you benefited a lot from Turkey moving to Constantinople. Um, and also though, it is funny, like in the end, despite you guys getting the, there by a circuitous route, and despite the fact you're not wanting to do a crazy Lepanto, <laughs> you end up doing a crazy Lepanto. Actually- The craziest it, it, Lepanto of all, yeah. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> though I will say, I, I do give, Austria Law of Credit, I don't know if, if, if you listened to my reevaluation of Austria's play that I had, did at the time, but in a way he did set it up because I mean the problem with the joint attack on Turkey is always the fact that there's not that many centers to go around and you need three people to crack him. If he had done this right, he could have been really benefited from taking Turkey out more so than he would have in a conventional way. Um, Agreed. Yeah, but but no, you you did really. I mean, it, it is really impressive that because you could have this this could have been a dark time for you for sure. Yeah, I I won't lie that uh, the move to Naples was, was it got me. I was in a bad spot, but um, I still had good relations with mm -hmm. uh, France, Germany, England, and Russia. Yeah, and, and I thought I still had a puncher's chance, and it turns out that Austria had a great deal of fear. He could see that I had sway over, um, over Germany and he decided that it needed to cut bait. And you weren't upset with Russia at all, the fact that he's completely hanging you out to dry here and not helping you out? Uh, no comment. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, heard, I heard, did I hear correctly, that you orchestrated the malicious support from Belgium, from Burgundy to uh, Picardy? Yeah, last term. Yeah, that was my idea. Yeah. Oh, that's uh, why their move suddenly got good. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. And the support was so awesome. Yeah, yeah uh, thank, uh, you. thank you. Thank you. No, that's my idea. This, this is the turn when I, uh, when I uh, backed out of my deal with France. Um, and the reason why is because I, I knew that I couldn't, I, had, I wasn't going to get anything out of it myself. Uh, I wasn't going to be able to pull off some, some big move where I was gonna be able to jump in uh, through treachery into Spain and Marseille. Mm -hmm. So I needed um, to decide uh, what, what I was doing in the West. And I decided that what would really scare um, Austria is if France started collapsing. And yeah. so I just, I, I pulled the plug and I, uh, I, I think I gave France some bad information and I think I gave England, Germany, a really good tip. What about the uh, double supported convoy into Picardy? Was that you two? The one a little earlier? Where they where they support through the North Sea and the English Channel? It's right probably here. us, because it took them a few seasons. I know. I, I feel like they listened to our podcast and did this move, but. <laughs> um, oh, no. Uh, actually, they came up with that on their own. That's good. That's the, good. The, that, that convoy? Although I think I later found out that Austria gave him the idea. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, you got to keep in mind that um, there was a perception that EVR, or sorry, that, uh, that England and Germany weren't very good tactically. Well, I and can see so why there was a 
Every, yeah, everyone wanted to, I don't think that perception was very true, um, but the perception was there and everyone was offering them advice, gotcha. including me. Um, so I, I can't take credit for all their moves, but also they can't take credit for all their moves. Mm -hmm. I will yeah, take credit. Because it, it seemed like every move they had was delayed. So it's like, oh, you did yeah. that, Let's do it this way next time. So I, yeah, I we, were, we were remarking on that. It seemed like there was one move that was kind of incompetent and then there'd be a good move. And then yeah, everything seemed like a season <laughs> late. Oh, I see what you're trying to do here. So this is how you do it. I could just, yeah. it just yeah, like that, that's, that's a really good point. Um, no, I was. I think I was more in their ears than than that. Um, we can talk about who was in their ears later in the game. But at this point, I'm I'm giving them. I gave them the the tip on the malicious support. And at this point, my strategy is, I need to prove to Austria that the board is developing quickly in the West, and he needs to quickly kill Turkey. That we need to keep up with the West. That we can't let the Western Triangle settle before the Eastern Triangle settles. And this is all ways that I am using my leverage to encourage him to get the fuck out of Naples and get yeah. back on track. And it worked. Well, I mean, it worked, it was beautiful. I mean, at this point I thought, you know, you are in the driver's seat. Yeah. Also- I won't lie, I won't lie. I was very, I was full of myself and there was a really bad move I made later that was pure hubris. We'll get to that soon. I also say, like leaving. You also just, you 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 did. Uh, it was quite daring of you also to oh. leave Venice here. Pie, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, so I, I play poker, and um, one, there's that that uh, you want to play your outs. Um, you want to play the game in such a way that if, if if things go away that you're going to lose no matter what, don't worry about that. Um, don't worry about all the all the ways you're do already doomed. Try to just do the best you can in the chances where you win. And um, I knew that I would just be doomed if Austria was lying. If Austria pressed his attack, uh, yeah. I was just there was nothing I could do about it. If if I convoy uh, Apulia to Syria and he just walks into Rome, what? Rome and Venice. Yeah, you could have. Yeah, lost what, yeah whatever. What? Yeah, I mean. If he if that's his plan, he's got me. I can't stop him. But let's assume he's telling the truth because that's the only way I can win. Yeah. So if we assume he's telling the truth, yeah, go for it. And then I did. I went for uh, Piedmont, and I'm very happy that I I did. Uh, you know, I I, I could have lost to turn this game, but if I was going to survive, I wanted to survive with the best possible chance of, of doing well. I mean, you could have you you to think he was yeah. telling the truth because Russia. It was in Russia's interest. For Austria to do this as well, everyone was telling him to back off. Russia wasn't moving, but he was in his—he was in Austria's ear. Look, I—I I, I said no comment earlier. I will just say this: uh, Russia disappointed me uh, again and again. I wanted the Wintergreen to happen. He never—he talked about it, but it never happened. Yeah. And instead, he just contracted and contracted, and contracted. I think he's a great player but I don't think he was on the level with me about the Wintergreen. And also um, I think he was, he, he was, he was great at, 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 the, at uh, the diplomacy at talking, but never showed up for me moves wise, but that's okay because he was in Austria's ear. So was Germany. Uh, and they were both asking him to write the ship, get back on board with the, the, uh, the Turkish attack. And that's what he did. Yeah, I like this move. It's very bold and aggressive. Um, yeah, this is good. This is this yeah, might be a lot of the Austrian moves move. that are that are fun and crazy, but there's a lot of times he does unnecessary supports and weird shuffles, and then rushes the extreme where he doesn't like the move at all. So, I I really really like the, the gambling all over on this one. They're really yeah. good. All it was it was a great turn and as you can see it's paying off already when germany supports me into marseille mm -hmm. this i call this was a year <laughs> this was, was a year a when i i felt like uh this is when my my confidence really started brewing and that was trouble your ego's galloping here it, it sure was because there were a lot of things i yeah i th this was a fine this is a fine turn but um uh, this is when I began fixating on Greece, and that was bad news. So, 
actually, there's one thing on this turn too, and we, I actually want to return this a little later because in our interview with Conk, I'm so mystified, and 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 I actually think we should return this later, but I just want to point out why it's still here because, and I wasn't there. I've only heard this secondarily. There's a lot of talk about how the board, there was this kind of, you gain this bad reputation on the board. People would share your press and mock it and call it tomfoolery. And, and sure. Punk, during his talk, he was like, oh, I couldn't, I couldn't possibly trust Italy. But the odd thing is if you, you know, from, from us, from the outside, this is actually the only time to, that you move, well, you convoy the army to Syria, which is kind of understandable because you need it out. Uh, but right. that and this cut of the support is the only thing you ever do to him. So right. I was a little bit mystified by that. And I, I don't know if we need to address it now or later, but it does seem like you were diplomatically isolated. Uh, it reminds me of, I mean, what in our game with you, we did something a little bit similar because you do tend to flit about the board. So it's kind of, we can like slut shame you a little bit, you know? Um, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so. well, hold on before you answer. To give context to, to Han's thing, I don't think you said you listened to Doc's interview. It's true. Uh, said Doc, Doc said, you know, that you lied and lied and lied. And of course, that happens in diplomacy. So sometimes that happens. That you're the least liked person on the table. <laughs> yeah. And he said that you were the least liked person on the table, that you had no trust with anyone. He said for sure you would not win because of that. Uh, you would not win the popularity contest on a top board. Village Idiot said the same thing. I mean, he's the one that said that People called it tomfoolery, I think, even to your face, uh, you know, uh, during the game. And and Conk, in his interview, talked about he didn't go that far, but said basically you were incredibly unreliable. I think that was the word that he used, more unreliable than anyone else. Were you, in your mind, unreliable? And if you weren't, how did this perception, at least that we heard from the first three people we've interviewed, come about? Uh, I think that, uh, Doc was, uh, coming to me every, uh, turn with, uh, moves that I should submit. And he explained why they were good moves and why they were in my best interest. And my conversation, and, and, uh, I think that he meant well, but I did feel, uh, uh, condescended to uh, more than once in the way he talked about the game with me. Um, I did not get the sense uh, ever that he was uh, um, negotiating uh, in good faith. And yeah. when we were in our negotiations, I would often um, just sort of uh, beg off and say, I mean, uh, that's 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 interesting. That's a great idea. I'll think about it. Um, but let's change the subject. Let's talk about this. Uh, I don't think that it's interesting that he he said I was unreliable. That was I'm turkey. To, turkey for oh, the sorry. Microphone. Turkey oh, would okay. want to use that word. Unreliable. Um, there were plenty of times when Turkey. I think I think they both have something in common, which is they both show up with a plan that's already formed, yeah. and I need it's. I feel like it's my job to either say yes or no to it. Uh, they didn't like hearing maybe, um, and the fact is that uh, neither of them were very interested in uh, changing the plan or negotiating or having it go a different way, and so they ended up getting a lot of. Um, uh, like, I, I, I often, you know, had to push them away or give them the silent treatment uh, because I just wasn't happy with the, the deals they were bringing and they, they, I didn't think that they were uh, negotiating in good faith. Um, was I unreliable? I can think of only a couple times when I didn't do what I said. Uh, but that was also, it was, they were mostly toward the end of the game. And so I think that there's sort of a recency bias. Um, yeah. Gosh, but maybe it's true. I mean, maybe I was the least reliable person in the game. I will oh. say that uh, other people seem to be stabbing each other constantly. 
so I, I, I find that a little far-fetched, but I don't know, I'm not privy to the other negotiations. I will say there were plenty of times I let Conk down. That's mostly because he was at one center for the second half of the game. Right. Your job is feel, to help him. I didn't feel like he was bringing anything, uh, offering anything that would actually improve my chances. I often thought it'd be better if he were off the board. He was just an X factor. He was muddying the waters. He wasn't um, like improving my chances by being a potential rival fleet uh, and a pawn of Austria in the East. So if he found me unreliable, it's because I didn't really have any meaningful negotiations with him for the second half of the game. Um, I, I want to say two comments. First of all, I think that there is an element of a structural issue. A successful Italy always kind of seems like an asshole somehow in almost every game I've had because you have to be flexible. Um, and in fact, I found that when I've had really, because I've had some amazing runs with the Austro-Italian alliance, Austria is the opposite. Everyone loves Austria. Austria is like the teddy bear. And the I feel like the Austria-Italy dynamic really works well if you play a good cop, bad cop with Italy is like the evil scheming vizier. Austria is the nice guy. You kind of play people like that way. Um, sure. But I, I, if I want to ask, but just there's that. But then I want to ask you, who do you think came up with Tom Fleury? Because to me, I, I don't know. This is just my intuition. That's And that's my really one of my only strengths in this game. I'm new to it. I suck in a lot of ways. I feel like someone is behind this. Who do you think came up with Tom Fullery? Or do you think it's just obvious and present itself to them? Greg. Yeah. <laughs> Greg, Greg came up with it. Which one's Greg again? Village idiot. <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, the village idiot. Village, vill, I, 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 yeah. would, I would say 9% uh, yeah, chance. I don't know that for sure, but I think it's very likely. Yeah. Um, he was, I, I, I think that, you know, it's the same, for the same reason he said I was the hardest working player. He was aware that I was constantly negotiating with, uh, with him and, and, uh, Austria and Germany. Um, just, uh, you know, every turn I was in their ears and they're talking to each other. I think that I, I'm, I'm, you know, it's too bad. It's a bad reputation, but I was expecting, them to at some point get together and say, have you guys noticed that Tom does this? Have you guys noticed that Tom does this? They pointed out verbal tics that I have. They pointed out that I usually say their actual uh, Christian name uh, when I'm about to lie to them. Like I'll say, look, Greg, you've got to work on- They gave away your work towels. On Ukraine. They talked about your towels. <laughs> yeah, I got, I, they're talking about my towels. Why can't I talk about them? Yeah. <laughs> Um, there were there were other things. Uh, at one point, Germany turned to uh, uh, England and said, "Isn't it?" And England later told me about this. He was like, "Is don't doesn't don't you notice when Tom talks in this very certain way, and you know he's trying to manipulate you?" And they both, I think, their nickname for me was Master uh, of Manipulation or something like that. I, I, you know, I hope I hope audacious hand that you're right that this oh. comes with the turf of being. Italy and being a good Italy yeah. uh, because I was talking with everyone and trying them to get to do what I wanted all game. So there's going to be people who are disappointed. There's going to be people who feel like I'm unreliable. Um, I was just trying to win and uh, I hope I get to play all these people again. It was a great game. I'm saying is there's been two really successful Italy's in the finals and that, and beyond that, I've seen this many other times and they've both been the most hated person on the board. So there's a structural issue there too. But cool. Yeah, I, I don't mind. I, I personally think that um, most hated, I don't know, is it personality wise? I'm not sure, but I do know no, that no, definitely. everyone on the board was trying to get Doc and Conk off the board. Yeah. That was, I, I talked to everyone and Doc said, I'm trying to figure it out. And Conk said, I'm trying to figure it out. And everyone else said, we got to kill those two dudes. Yeah. So I was just happy I could help. <laughs> yeah uh i want to go back you missed i criticize you here on building the fleet and not an army you're thinking uh that was a uh, a gesture uh to uh, austria thinking that with russia in his centers like this and posing a threat 
that I really wanted to help make nice with Austria, recover our relationship. That's really all it was. Also, I had visions of capturing um, uh, more uh, centers in the West, and I wanted to make sure I could while Austria and Russia were flaring up. Okay, but Might have been a mistake. You do that, but the next turn in the spring, you turn on Austria, and, and you don't have enough armies to defend. Uh, actually, I didn't turn on Austria. Uh, this was, I, uh, I was supposed to walk into Greece. Oh, so this was not con convincing you to cut Greek, Greek support. Yeah. We knew that because we, we, we knew that because remember he, he followed the, the Ionian. So we knew only you thought that Ed, <laughs> I, I think we, we both said like, Conk lied to him and, and said he was getting a support maybe. Yeah. I don't remember the details, guys. I do remember that um, uh, that I say I remember that uh, this was an Austrian stab that sure that just didn't look like an Austrian stab. Uh, in fact, everyone I've, everyone congratulated me. You said that uh, that that move there was there was the the move where he uh, where we convoy him out of Apulia was like the best my best move of the game. I actually think this move to Tyrolia was my best move of the game. It was. If I don't, it was great. If, yeah. Uh, if I didn't make that move, I would have lost on the spot. Yeah, this was great. We, I think, I don't remember. I think in the podcast, uh, we gave many reverse. It knows. just, it doesn't look, it doesn't look like <laughs> it. you don't look at this board and see how important that was. But this was no, an Austrian awesome stab, and I barely survived. Me and Stitches saw it at the time. Oh, as I as you as you but but did you know. think that Russia? I mean, it is a great move. But why did you think that Russia and Austria would, or that Germany would, I mean, sorry, that Russia would move out of Budapest? Because they were worried about Germany? I mean, did you think Russia, Austria is making a move on you? Here? Right. I mean, like, you know. He was. Yeah, he did. Austria right. was making a move on him here. It was a reverse hedgehog kind of situation. He, he blocked right. him off Tyrolia so he couldn't load up. I see. I understand why. But yeah, no, I mean, what? but I'm trying to get at, what was in your intuition that that was going to happen at that point? Um, I knew that if I didn't do it, I would lose on the spot. Uh, this is again, this is sort of like that, what I was talking about earlier, where um, if, if, if you are going to lose, if you don't do a move, um, and, but if you do it, but if that, if you can save your life, you just kind of have to do it. It's sort of a forced move. Um, I couldn't, I had to play conservatively and I couldn't risk just losing on the spot by letting him set up an attack on Venice in the uh, fall. I, I already took a big risk by building a fleet, and I couldn't compound that risk by not covering, covering Terulia. Uh, so I'm not going to say that I had any special insight. I just looked at the board with um, fearful eyes and played conservatively and saved my life. I mean, I will say, though, I remember, I do remember talking about this move at length because we, me and uh, me and Keith really appreciated that you blocked him off Tyrolia. We thought that was great. We really didn't understand why you tapped Greece. Uh, well, I mean, I, I thought that you thought that uh, Turkey would support you in, which it sounds like you didn't think that. Um, if I, if I recall, um, he was going to, Austria said he was going to give me Greece this turn. But then why, but if you think he's going to attack you, why would you still go in there? It just seems because the move to Naples is very wasted. Like you had, you would almost have an excuse to go to the Tyrrhenian Sea. Um, yeah, um, I think the, the, the one mistake uh, on, on this turn was the move to Ionian. That might be hindsight. Because mm -hmm. uh, yeah. obviously, knowing we know now, the move to Tyrrhenian is better. Yeah. But at the time, um, yeah, if it looks like it doesn't make any sense, Audacious, it's because it doesn't. I yeah. was on the one hand defending against an Australian stab, and on the other hand accepting Austria at his word that I was going to walk into Greece. Mm -hmm. It's schizophrenic, but um, but you could have apologized me... and said ah, I didn't know. As it turns out, though, it was fine. Your head yeah, I, I I did what I did because it let me do okay either way. You yeah. could have done the same thing moving to Trieste, and you didn't do that. You had plausible deniability. Yeah, I could have done it. With, I could have done it with Trieste, but I want to be the nice guy. Right. I think. I think no. His move was way better than move Trieste because he isolates the army in Bohemia. Yeah, yeah. I, but I, I take your point, uh, uh, Go Horns. 
Is, is it Ed? Yeah. I take it. I take your point, Ed. Um, yeah, maybe Trulia was the better version, but the reason I didn't go Trias is because I didn't want to. Uh, I didn't want to be a, a both sides thing. I wanted yeah. him to be the bad guy, and that's that's you know that's how this looked. It looked like he tried to stab me to everyone, and it looked like it backfired. So I was happy to walk away from this. Uh, alive. Your move in the West and, was really good too, by the way. I mean, as oh. it's fast forwarding, but your move in the West was nice too. Did England know that you were walking into Spain here? Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, and the deal was that I would support him into Portugal in the fall. All right. And here's the famous misorder. I can't believe you thought you'd get, o you'd get away with this, man. No, no, I, 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 uh, oh boy. What was I thinking? Yeah. Come <laughs> on. I was Come like, on. This, this, this is, is, this is the human thing. Thing lied to. <laughs> yeah. This is your ego galloping here. You, you thought you could, you, you thought you could talk your way out of a paper bag and be like, Yep. Oh, I was at the game. This, this oh, was yeah, yeah, I was I was riding high when I uh, came up with this plan. Um, <laughs> yeah. On the I, other I think... hand, on the other hand, if, if you had done it, it, you know, you may have gained the ally in England, given that the stab occurred on the same turn from Germany to England. Oh, it was a it was a bad idea in so many ways. Here's the reason why, though. I so I I knew about the stab. I knew it was going to happen. Oh, okay. Um, Germany yeah, asked sure. me if it was a good idea, and we went over it and talked about different ways it could go. Um, getting um, uh, the way we sort of finesse uh, England into St. Pete so that he can take Norway. Uh, it was, there were lots of uh, good elements to it. Um, and- This was bad. Sorry, man. Uh, I, think, oh, yeah, I, my, think, I think Hand would have preferred you to support into Portugal and take MAO. Yeah, if, I think that this is one of the junctures at the game that cost you the game. If you had supported sure. Portugal and taken the Mid-Atlantic. Yep. Uh, so the reason why, uh, well, so first of all, it, it was a mistake. It absolutely was. What I was thinking was that there is a chance that Germany is lying to me and that he is not about to stab England and that he is just passing on everything we're saying to England. And I was vulnerable in Marseille and I wanted to make sure that I covered that vulnerability. Basically, again, I wanted to do okay if Germany was telling me the truth and I wanted to do okay if Germany was lying to me. Uh, but in hindsight, the least I could have done was hold in Spain and not this Bush League uh, nonsense. Um, so apologies uh, to, yeah. to England for that. I think though, yeah, there's a few mistakes. I mean, this it's funny because I, I was, I, I mean, I'm not trying to kill you here because your previous move was really great. It's, it's all good. Yeah, it's, it, and I just think that you, you were, you really rolled the dice. You, your intuition was rolling. Being scared, even if you had lost Marseille, oh, man, taking the Mid Atlantic get you know england might have still been grateful even even while you have him pinned in portugal um at the time I, I in retrospect it wasn't so bad but at the time we kind of didn't really love you bringing the the turkish fleet closer to you either um well keep in mind that this was right in the heels of that second austrian stab right. at this point this is the first time in the game that turkey and i are actually really able to to come up with something mm -hmm. um and, uh, and, and we do, and for a while there, it's, you know, we're, we're pushing back on Austria and it seems effective. Um, this is also, however, sort of the beginning of what became a pretty apparent later, which is the German-Austrian cooperation. Um, we can get more into that later, but. Um, well, I mean, again, you're the beneficiary of board dynamics here. Russia soft stabs Vienna you helped Turkey into Austria. So, I mean, you, you've got, I mean, Russia thought he could just, he told me he thought he could explain all this to Austria and, you know, work it out. But Austria ends up sort of deprioritizing you over hatred of Russia at this point. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, you know, and I, so I, who it may have been, uh, was it I Doc or Conk who said I was the least liked, but now I'll tell you what, um, in, through most of the mid game, I just felt like I had, uh, I had everyone's ear and everyone was yeah. um, willing to make deals. And I, 
So you're, you know, made, I, I'm sure that I stepped on all those, you know, I, I, I pissed off everyone and burned every bridge on my way toward the end game. But uh, there was a, I think this was a phase in the mid game where uh, a yeah. lot of my hard work was paying off. Well, Hand and I both thought, and I think he, uh, Superstition did as well, that, you know, Turkey would be really grateful to you here. Exactly, yeah. And not, not that, and you would be the beneficiary of that later on, but it didn't appear to be the case. No, no, concated everybody. Huh. Uh, at least that's what he said in his messages to everybody. Um, and, you know, complaining in the public forum, um, it all just seemed like he was ready to go, like he was cooked and he knew it. So I was happy to help him. It definitely helped me to help him. And, uh, but no, there was just, there was just nothing there. You know, uh, you're right that I was bringing an, a rival fleet, you know, closer to my territory. Uh, I was making it harder for me to make progress uh, in the South. There were lots of reasons why we couldn't work together long-term. This yeah, was a short-term yeah, solution to the Austrian centers. You lost all those home centers and you're his only friend. Yeah, sure. But it just couldn't, there was just nothing there. I couldn't, I couldn't make a deal. Yeah. It was very hard to make a deal with Conk because he Even was just one, mad at everybody. He hated, he hated oh, me for helping kill him. Yeah, it's just, I think you should it just hear the, I think that your mistake kind of at this point, and again, like I can see it because I see the moves afterwards. You go hard. You you could have just been really passive in the east while they all kind of cut each other up and, and gone hard west here. But yeah, yeah, like even the tap on on Trieste doesn't seem particularly needed. Um, well, you thought you oh, might have gone to Budapest. Yeah, sure. That's true. Uh, you'll you'll see me move to Trieste uh, from the from Venice. I think almost every turn of the game from here on out. So. <laughs> and it's good because if you tried to shuffle. Back in the Tyrolia, you would split yeah, the army. And, it's, and, and the repetition it's of it, even though it seems useless, doing it again and again and again means he, yeah. he can never he can never count on it being open. No, I like to do that too sometimes. And then you then when you don't do it, it's kind of a surprise. But I just think, yeah, I just think the west to east, because that's you know, Italy is is always the west to east kind of dynamic. And it's it's easy to say in hindsight. I just think that going west part would be good, but yeah, let's go on. I don't want to just squabble about it either. I was a, I was a tad surprised you didn't convoy Rome here. The, oh, to uh, to like Albania? Mar well, Marseille, if you were going to go west, which you kind of did. Yeah, I was frustrated with you here too. Oh, sure. Yeah, I think a lot of people were... Um, I don't... Gosh, I'm, I, you know, I'm sorry, but I don't remember. I remember it was a tough choice. And I was agonizing over it uh, the the whole the whole way, um, but in the end, I decided I just wanted to get the fleets uh, that it would it would cost me both of my fleets movement that turn. It was better to just take yeah. a shot at uh, Spain, make sure I got west, and yeah. started putting pressure to get to the mid. If okay. Doc had let you into Spain, this would have actually been great. Because you would have, yeah, it sure, yeah. it sure would have. <laughs> um, but you could have I, already had the Mid Atlantic. Uh, uh, okay, so, yep. <laughs> all right. Well, let's, let's move on to another dynamic we haven't talked about, which is Germany. Because uh, I'm taking the following. Right now, Germany's board leader by a lot. Well, yep. by two. Um, Russia's big but vulnerable, which a lot of Russia's can be. You've mentioned here that, I mean. You've worked with Germany. Germany supported you into Marseille. You had good relations with Germany, but you also said Austria had good relations with Germany. Well, so I knew that I was working with Germany um, after uh, he he saved my bacon with in Tyrolia and, and supported me into Marseille. And we discussed the stab and collaborated on that. Uh, but I also, it became apparent that as much as he said he was upset with Austria for stabbing me, that in fact they were um, working together. So I think they had sort of a crypto alliance. Uh, you can see them like doing these sort of prearranged bounces along their border. 
to make it look like they're fighting. And they were telling everybody that they were fighting. But um, Russia and I, you know, talked long and hard about this and decided that we would need a contingency plan if the Austrian-German alliance ever really came out in the open and, and came into its own. Oh. Um, so uh, that, it turns out that England, despite my shenanigans, was really, you know, he was looking for a friend. And uh, I apologized to him. I, I, I did that whole, I said, you know, look, I, I, I've embarrassed myself. That was the, the worst turn I've had yet. Um, but I'm refocusing and let's work together and stop Germany. And meanwhile, I, you know, I start asking Germany, when am I going to get a center out of this? When, when does this stab turn into something that I can hang my hat on? And uh, he was evasive and evasive and evasive. And you'll see in the next couple moves that it just falls apart. And uh, I come out in the open with England against Germany. Yeah, right here. Here. Yeah. But uh, is this? Well, yes. I've moved to Burgundy, I assume, could not have been taken as anything other than anti German. Yes. Yeah. yeah. He, um, he told, yeah. And uh, unfortunately, uh, it's unfortunate because yeah, this was where it fell apart. Uh, this, I, I asked him for either Brest or Paris. And he waffled and waffled and said he couldn't do it. And he, this was the first time he did something he did two or three times. It was, it became his, uh, his, his tick. He would start a negotiation and slow roll it right before the deadline yeah. so that he was still hemming and hawing right in the last minute. That's the power move. Yeah. That's the and power I just, move. I just, so one minute left on the clock, I said, you're not fine. Forget it. Um, I've, I entered something else, and I very nearly, uh, I very nearly ordered to Paris, which would have been, Amazing. which would have, which which would have been great. Yeah. Um, and it was just a mistake. I, uh, it, this is the kind of thing where it's like this is the first time he tried to fool me with this, and I well, guess could you could say known. it worked. You could have thought it was. I mean, you could have easily yeah, yeah. suspected Pickardy moving to Brest. But he probably could break support, and that would stop him from getting Brest if France doesn't move. So yeah. right. overall, it's a great move both ways. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, in the in the end, uh, Burgundy, you know, that Burgundy felt safer, and I wanted the leverage. And I, I, you know, I, I think that slipping into Ruhr at some point would have been very useful. So I think it was still a good move, but this was uh, another mistake. And I think that the move to Paris, if I had, uh, you know, another hour to think about it that day, would have been better. I also think. I mean. So this is also, I think, a little bit of a juncture for you. By the way, I'm enjoying this so much. This is like the straight up nerdiest interview we've had yet. We're, it's probably going to go like three hours, but like- No, the, it's uh, not going to go three hours. But, uh, it's not going to go three hours. hours. But the uh, but uh, it was, it, you you finally do little switcheroons in Mid-Atlantic, which was nice. Uh, I do wonder though, I feel like even, yeah, Paris is like easy hindsight. I almost feel though- even if you had kind of held Gascony or something, you might have been able to. Do you think you might have been able to keep your options open with? Uh, with break Paris, you're still going to be in Gascony. If you're I know, not. but do you think? I guess my question is, regardless of the move, do you think that maybe moving to Burgundy, like you might have been able to keep your options open with Germany a little more here? Um, keep them. I I needed more. to. Um, I needed to cut bait with Germany. I I was aware yeah. that he was making deals with Austria. I was aware that uh, he wasn't going to give me uh, my part, my my part of the spoils. Gotcha. Yeah. And I was aware that uh, he had been negotiating with uh, uh, France. I know this doesn't look like it. Yeah. But uh, uh, France was was trying to cut a deal with with Germany at this point, and I just I knew that England was uh, someone who needed my support. It was a sure thing. And who I could, and who I had a good relationship with, we had really bounced back after the Portugal shenanigans. Mm -hmm. And so, gotcha. It was a clear choice for me. I needed to be deliberate about it. I couldn't sit on the fence. So now you're the only one who's trying to stop Germany, and Russia yes. is sitting there again. But yeah. let, me, let me ask you this, which is, I, I, I think we all thought Russia would disband Smyrna at this yeah. point, uh, yeah. and. If, if that was my running assumption, 
then then the fleets are even uh, at worst for you, and you build a fleet in Naples with three Austrian armies uh, right there. The thinking of the fleet versus an army here is what? Yeah, uh, everybody hated this build uh, except me. So sometimes that is confirmation. It means you're doing the right thing uh, mm -hmm. when no one likes it. Yes. Um, uh, the reason I did it is because I knew my position in Greece was very tenuous. Um, and uh, there was no way I was keeping try after that, after that, you know, the way I snuck in there. Mm -hmm. Even if I build in Venice, there's no way. It's mm -hmm. a long-term situation. Uh, also, Russia is finally starting to do something. Uh, and Austria can't pick on me anymore. Or so you thought. So I thought. Uh, <laughs> so I wanted to, yeah, I wanted to reinforce my position in the East. I, I told you guys earlier that I was all about, you know, securing uh, my position with one fleet in Greece and one fleet with Ionian. I had the opportunity to do that in the fall of this turn and mm. not doing it as, or wait, is that, was it next? It, it was it was one of these turns, but anyway, um, my, my, I think my biggest mistake of the game is going to be coming up in about a year. But you can see there's lots of good things happening in the West. Yeah. The, uh, the fleet movements there were, um, were really hard to negotiate the way we counted on Germany moving to Paris. But it was great. And the other fleets all being able to swoop in like that. Yeah, that was, uh, cool. that was uh, really elegant. And it was, mm -hmm. uh, yes. it, was, it, was, it was a great, it was a great conversation tactically. It's when I really felt like England and I could work together. We were building our trust and building our alliance. And this was probably the, the peak of that. This was the peak of uh, England-Italy cooperation. But to your horror, Germany matched your elegance here with the four army daisy chain moving west against you. That must have not felt very good. Nope. Yeah. That was <laughs> yeah, the move to the move, move to Belgium was just a guess. Uh, I just knew that it couldn't move to Paris. Uh, so yeah. What it what it actually did do, I, you know, I I, I clearly the, the choice would have been Munich, but that's hindsight. Yeah, yeah, I, I said the same thing. Like it's one of those things where you look back and like, why did I move to Munich? But I, I wouldn't have thought of that either. I don't think most people would. It's well, Germany looked very committed against Russia, but Russia had yeah. good defense. I mean, so uh, it, it's hard. Yeah, if Russia had only <laughs> blocked him. Uh... And the reason, yeah, and the reason for that disband, by the way, by Russia is just because. Um, he was at this point in the game insisting that he would throw the game to Germany. Yeah. And he wanted to prove it to Austria. He said, Austria, if you don't actually do something against Germany, I will disband this way. And he, and he did. And at that point I was panicking. Uh, I was the only one doing anything about Germany and it was all falling apart. So when Russia yeah. says I was the hardest working player this game, I wasn't working any harder than I was this year trying to get people to leave yeah. each other alone and focus on Germany. Okay, two uh, didn't work. Uh, Vienna was supposed to move to Bohemia this turn, uh, and uh, Austria lied once again and went to Galatia. Right. Uh, uh, Russia talked about how bad that was. Russia and Turkey both said they thought this was Austria's best move, orchestrating the bounce in Bulgaria. Yeah. Yes, I, I agree. This was this was my biggest mistake of the game. Uh, I clearly should have supported Aegean back to Greece. It's so obvious to me in hindsight. Uh, Austria tricked me. Uh, I was a sucker, and it was a fatal mistake because I never uh, had a chance uh, in the East again after this. It's, I think ga game throwing threats just – I think this – everything you're telling me, and I've heard this in – I remember there's this one point when Powa in his first win, he he had literally made this public statement that said, if you say you're going to throw the game, it makes you want me to want to kill you more. Um, and and, and I, when we read Conk, he was talking about how he was threatening to throw the game in like 1902. And, you know. Yeah, he, yeah, I forget. At one point he said he would give me all the centers, but also so did Doc at one point. Yeah. Um, look, I if they want to call me unreliable, that's fine. But they're, there was a lot of things about their styles of diplomacy that made me think that I just couldn't work with them. Yeah. So I guess that makes me unreliable to them, but man, um, yeah, they were both threatening to throw constantly. Uh, yeah. I will agree with you. I played with Doc on the condescending tone. 
I mean, at one point, I I myself sort of had to break the wall with him and say, this is not the way to handle it with me. Like, you know, the, the way the way you discuss things with me is is not going to work with my personality. I'm, right, I'm contrarian, right. okay? Uh, so I get it. But that's the second point, the second issue I wanted to talk to you about. Doc in his interview and in his, and in his AAR, if you notice, he's the first one to jump in after the game's over, kind of demanding, like, why you didn't accept his plan to put England on, you know, two or three on ice and build your position. Uh, and, and, you know, why don't you respond to that here? You responded in, on Discord, but give us your thinking of, of why – you know, why you didn't turn on England yet. You moved out. Right. And my eventual stab of England was, was very poor. Um, but the reason I didn't stab him earlier is because uh, England um, was, was someone who I realized I could, uh, who I could count on, who needed me. Uh, and he wasn't a mercenary, uh, who wasn't going to flip around and play all the sides. He really, you know, did not like Germany, and um, I think it was he was mm -hmm. he was very authentic through our negotiations. Doc was giving me his plan, and whether it was a good plan or not, I didn't feel uh, safe keeping him uh, around or letting him grow in uh, the West. I had a chance to shut the door on him turn it into an England and Italy versus Germany fight. And I wanted that fight. That's the fight that I wanted. I think and you did. That's I just, first. it was a simple matter of personalities, not tactics. I will say and though. Doc's credit, they were good moves, but I would have stabbed an ally and yeah. I would have possibly reunited England and Germany. There were a lot of uh, strategic risks that were involved in what he was was giving me so they were they were great moves but I wasn't going to accept the deal because I, I agree it was about personalities I agree with you actually go oh, yeah, using two halves of two countries might be good for position but I think Germany was in much better position okay. to take advantage of that and without them wanting to leave their centers to defend or to attack they'd be on pure defense so Propping up England, I think, was the right way to go. I, I fully yeah, support it. Yeah, it was. It was. But there is there is the critique that we made. I think me and Keith made this. I think, so even though you want that you were fed up with, well, first of all, this is one of those little micro moves that really affected the game. Like, Doc really did screw you over by moving to Gascony. I think if you'd gotten Paris here, it would have made quite a difference. I'm sure that you were... <laughs> That, I'm sure that's one of those things you're probably going to relive, unfortunately. Like, damn it. Um, also, though, I we we were we were saying that even if you were against France at this point, you pr I think taking the Mid Atlantic again would have been better here. Um, he would have Doc would have been alive, but he he would have moved to Picardy, where he's in more of a position to annoy Germany than than you. And then you would have had the English Channel and the Mid Atlantic. Um, again, hindsight 2020. I just, no, I, I, just I, I have to disagree. Yeah. I would have had two disbands if I had done that, Audacious. Oh, that is true. Yeah, that is true. But it's true. But then, yeah, so it is good that you, you kind of, you might have anticipated you weren't going to get Paris. But at the, at the time, I was frustrated. I just kept thinking, like, why does he never go to the Mid Atlantic? Um, yeah, you would have had two disbands. Good point. Good point. No, this is when I started screaming Belgium, 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 because they could have taken Belgium because Holland was under pressure. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, this one was terrible, yeah. I mean, it started in 07, and it keeps going. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, let's hear this one. I feel like this might be some tactical foot dragging, right? Uh, yes. Uh, in fact, I told Germany uh, that I was going to – I told him to order this way, to save Paris. Mm -hmm. uh, because oh, – wow. Yeah, yeah, Germany was, I needed to make it appear to England that I was still on board, that I was working with them. Uh, but uh, Germany and I were talking about um, mm -hmm. finally doing something about uh, Austria. Mm -hmm. And I was also planning, uh, I needed like a year to just 
get get a get Greece back, get uh, get um, be in position to stab England thoroughly and win the game. And at that point, I was trying to buy time. So yeah, I I I, I was negotiating with Germany. I told him, look, we're not going to take Paris this year. Here's how you can stop me. And he believed me. I thought in the fall I could lie to him and take Paris, or I could patch things up with him and we'd work together. Yeah. So you don't regret not taking Belgium here? It theoretically believe... loses Burgundy. I mean, it, it, it's a it, it's a dangerous move in the spring to do that. Right. Uh, yeah, that's tough. And then I'm stuck covering Marseille. Or you could have put England there. I think that we seriously talked, uh, England and I did, about putting him there. But we decided to set up the fall by convoying to Picardy. That it would be better to guarantee it in the fall. All right. So in the fall, I mean, the... Ugh, awful stab. Awful. Terrible stab. Oh, bad. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is where it starts going downhill. It's not imperfect, but you were fatigued here. I think there's something going on with you because there's also like, what are you doing with the Audian? You're supporting Greece into yourself for some reason, like yeah, that was a that was a straight up misorder. This was guys. Was this, uh, yeah, you were fatigued here. I feel. Yeah, well, uh, I was moving. Um, oh, is that was going on. This is my this is my new house, guys, and uh, nice. yeah. So, but what, whatever. Uh, I this it didn't it didn't actually hurt me. It was a bad stab. It was a misorder in the Atlantic, in the uh, Aegean, but. Okay, you know, but all of that, uh, okay, agreed, all that may be not great, but uh, but at least you would grow, but this move of Tyroli into Venice supported by Austria, I mean, I don't think anyone really could have seen that as being a possibility at the time. You had just supported Germany down, probably felt a little confident about it. Yeah. Uh, tell me how that went down. I mean, I, you had to have been as stunned as everybody else. Yeah. Uh, it was, um, it was when I realized that, uh, Austria, no matter what, was not going to give me a chance in the same way that I had kept England out of contention this turn, Austria returned the favor. <clears throat> Um, and so it was just a moment where everyone was trying to push down their nearest rival instead of focus on Germany. Yeah. And you can see the game slipping out of, out of my hands here. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, for all your mistakes here, it sucks that you were the only one who ever tried to control Germany. It really does. So, um, you know, plenty happens in the next few years. I, you know, I, I, you may want to review it. I'm, I, I'm a little short on time. Yeah, we got it. We got a boogie too. So yeah. Boogie. Oh yeah, just lots of. What is this? This is. Yeah, I mean, it's a yeah. I lots mean, of I, nonsense. What are we doing? You're just trying to. Yeah. <laughs> All the Belgium. What's going on here? <laughs> uh, I think that at this point, I was uh, trying to come up with some crazy plans that would still allow me to win. Yeah. Uh, plans that involved recapturing Venice, which I was able to do, and plans which involved uh, uh, England throwing me some centers. Uh, and so what? you can already see me kind of setting up. We, set, we eventually swap. We agree to peace, England and I do, after that awful stab. Mm -hmm. And we swapped Brest and Portugal. That was arranged. And then my plan was to stab, take it all back, and somehow tie Germany. But guys, I got to be honest, at this point, it's, it starts drifting away. And I started asking you know, England to do things like step out of London so that I can walk in in the fall. You know, like, well, it I mean, it's not a bad idea. Okay, yeah. I mean, you know, we can we can kind of fast forward because it's not it's not so important, but it is not a bad idea, and I frankly thought it might work because if yeah. England, if England's true enemy is Germany, by not helping you, all he's going to do is enable the person that's that that did it to him. 
You're absolutely right. At this point, my pitch to Russia is you want anybody but Austria to win. My pitch to England is you want anybody but Germany to win. I'm the only one who can make both of you happy. And I ask them both to arrange their defense in such a way that I can get to eight and Germany gets to eight and I, I, I sneak in for the win. But, but gentlemen, as you can see by England's moves, um, the writing was on the wall. He wasn't uh, receptive. And um, I'm not going to say anyone threw to anyone else. Germany took the lead and he kept it. Mm -hmm. But um, there was never a, a receptive anti-German coalition. Everyone was trying to knock out the person in third place so they could be in second, so they could catch up to him. And we were just crabs in a barrel in the end game. Yeah. Lots of people had fighting chances in the mid game. By the end, Germany hit, hit the gas and ran away with it. You but could Tom, you also didn't help Austria at the end against Germany. You, you break the support here. And then before this, Austria does try to go all in against Germany and you don't support him to Tyrolia. So. so, so last season in spring, you support Turkey and the Greece. Um, why didn't you try to make a play on Greece yourself or Mm -hmm. for Trias or something. Yeah. Because uh, that one center would have won you the game in the, in the fall. Yeah, I asked uh, Austria to support me, or I asked uh, uh, Kong to support me in the Greece. He just, he flat out said no. He said, he said no. he was all done, uh, that uh, he didn't really feel comfortable playing Kingmaker. Uh, I, there was, we, we talked pleasantly, but there were no serious negotiations at this point. But you at didn't one want point, to, I just to take it yourself. Else. What's that? Why not take it yourself, I think, is what Keith is asking. I mean, it was, it was worth well, We decided game. to knock Austria down a peg. You were, you were more, more concerned about making Austria not win? Yeah, right? at, the, at, this, at this point, I, I, I see uh, my, my path is to, my only path is to get Germany, to, or my, is to get England to throw me dots and to get Austria low enough that he can't surpass Germany and, and me. So how do you take um, Greece right now? Um, and go to the fall. There, there's a path to win just by mm -hmm. sure. not tapping Tyrolia and leaving Brest alone because you knew you weren't going to take that. So you could counter Spain mm -hmm. and make a play on Belgium because there's always going to be a, a 50 50 for Germany there. Um, so that would have given you the tie and the win. I mean, I know it's a lot of what is, but it actually does make pretty good sense but yeah, yeah without yeah. thinking without making a play and getting grease you have yeah. to, you have to get someone to throw it to you oh, i don't know <laughs> right uh yeah my impression is that uh uh conk was making I, I wasn't sure that uh i would be able to keep it i wanted to offer it to conk and then try to retake it in the fall all right it's a try. Uh, yeah. It was it was a uh, what looked at the time to be a viable way out. But you're you're right. I mean, I am not sure that I was playing to all of my all my outs. Um, mm -hmm. It it was we'll the move. convoluted, and at a certain point, I sensed <laughs> that England wasn't going to give it to me, and at that point, it was moot. Yep. Okay, so time is sort of running short for you and uh, and me. Tom, is there anything else about this game that we haven't talked about that you'd like to discuss? Oh boy. Um, I think we really exhaustively covered it. I, think yeah. we did. I just, I just want to say that the conversations I had uh, with uh, Austria, Russia, um, uh, and Conk were just, were just flat out fun. Um, I, I was able to have good negotiations with the other players, but man, I hope I get to play more games, especially with uh, with Greg, with with Vi. Um, Really? He was, uh, he, was, he was a lot of fun to hash things out with. Even when he was down to one dot, uh, two dots, he was uh, a great sounding board. And we really walked together this game. We talked about a winter green pretty much the whole way through. It never happened. Oh, and I'll say one more thing. I made two bets during this game, both to Austria. I bet him that I would have to buy him a drink if uh, winter green ever actually happened. <laughs> and it never did, so I don't owe him anything. And I made him a bet that I would never get to eight centers. And I never did. So I don't owe him anything. <laughs> so uh, it's too bad. I wish I had won those bets. But um, 
uh, it was it was a fun game, and uh, I was threatening to get eight centers all all game. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, anyway, yeah, a lot game. of fun, and I, I hope I'm back next year. So look out for me. Yeah, well, we hope to see you in the DBNI tournament. Uh, that will be uh, fantastic. Uh, so uh, keep your fingers crossed. You can play in Cascadia and try and qualify. Uh, if you're just outside the top 28, I hope you do. Uh, and stitches in hand, you should play in Cascadia also. I think you guys would like the virtual face-to-face. -face. So thanks so much, Tom, for joining us and giving us uh, not just a thorough and comprehensive defense, but uh, a good case for why you did what you did when you did it and owning up to, as all diplomacy players do, make mistakes during the game. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, think that honesty is going to be appreciated uh, uh, by people who listen. So thanks again to diplomacybriefing.com, to Hand, to Stitches, and uh, most of all to you, Tom, for joining us. Thanks so much. Thank you.